Number three, you can and should name those unnamed Oracle errors. Never hard code an error number. So here's the situation. Uh, Oracle database has a whole lot of error codes in it. And some of those error codes are given names in the standard package of PL SQL. For example, no data found, value error, too many rows. But of course, there are a whole lot of errors for which there is no predefined name. And you might need to reference those errors in your code. So the key thing here is to avoid hard coding those error numbers in your application and instead associate that error code with an exception that you declare as opposed to us declaring it inside the standard package. Associate the code with your exception using the exception init pragma and then you can reference raise and both handle that exception by name. Let's take a look in live SQL. Okay, here's my script on using exception init to give names to unnamed Oracle errors. In statement one, I simply show you how to take advantage of this feature. I declare my own exception, bad date format, and I associate that exception with the error code negative 1830, because that might be raised in some of my date manipulation, and I wanna be able to handle it by name to make my code more readable and understandable to people maintaining it down the line. And that's what you see here. I try to convert my string to a date it's a bad date format. My exception handler checks it by name when bad date format, and then I handle that exception. Much nicer than having to hard code the exception error, the error code itself, which I'll show you later on in the script. Now looking at statement two, this simply points out that when you use the exception in a pragma, you need to associate your exception with a negative error code. And the reason I like to point this out is that there are at least two places in the PL SQL framework, the save exceptions feature for for all and the log errors feature, in which the Oracle error code is stored as an unsigned integer, 1830, for example, instead of negative 1830. So you need to be careful sometimes with the codes that are handled by Oracle, but your error code inside the pragma should be negative. And of course, we'll let you know if it's not. Statement three and four. So just to point out a very interesting special case, you cannot use pragma exception init to associate your exception with negative 14 or three. And I'm not sure why you would. That's the no data found exception. So you can reference Oracle's no data found. But interestingly, if you try to do this, you'll get an error. The only way to associate the no data found error inside Oracle with your own exception is to associate it with the pragma with the error code 100. No data found actually has two different error codes, hearkening back to the early days of ANSI standards and the, the very origins of relational and SQL databases. Okay, enough trivia. Let's take a look at statement five. Now in statement five, I exercise the use of the pragma in a couple of different ways relating to user-defined exceptions. So first of all, I can declare my own exception, for example, eBad data, and not associate it with any particular error code. In that case, the exceptions error code returned by SQL code is always negative one, and the error message is always user-defined exception. Then I declare two more exceptions, and I give them each error numbers with the exception in it pragma. And in this case, the error numbers are between minus 20,000 and minus 20,999, the range reserved by Oracle for us to use in our own applications, usually with the raise application error built in. Notice I also declare an error number for minus 2200, and I'll show you why in just a moment. Okay, so in my first nested block, I simply raise my bad data exception. When I take a look at the resulting SQL code and the error message, you can see, as I mentioned before, that the error code is one, and the unhandled and the error message is unhandled user-defined exception. In my second nested block, I raise balance too low. And then when I display the error code and error message, you can see that they are the error code, the error, error code of minus 20,100, but the error message is null because I have not associated an error with it using raise application error. Same thing for account closed the first time I raise it. But the second time I raise it is with raise application error. And in this case, notice I must use the error number. I cannot pass an exception to raise application error. And then I can pass it in my own error message and that is what will then be displayed to the user in addition to my Oracle error number, 20,200. Now for the last three statements in my script, what I want to do is demonstrate why it's such a bad idea to hard code error codes in your software 
and instead to use named exceptions. So in statement six, I create a copy of the HR employees table because I'm going to modify it in my application code. In statement seven, I use for all to do bulk updating and I add the save exceptions clause. And what this means is that when and if the for all statement encounters an error in one of the executions of its DML statements, it will save the exception information and keep on going. And then when it's done, it will raise the aura negative 24381 error. And this is another one of those error codes which is not given a name. So what I could do is end up writing code like you see here. When others then, if SQL code equals negative 24381, then do such and such and so on. Otherwise, re-raise the same exception. What's wrong with this? Well, if you know what the negative 24381 error code is, that's great, but very few people do. And if they do today, they're likely to forget tomorrow. And when people come along later to look at your code and have to maintain it, what this code says to them is, I feel so stupid. Steven knew what negative 24381 is, and I don't which means I'm scared of doing anything in his code. I don't want to touch a thing. So that's the problem with hard coding these kinds of error codes. You're, you're implying knowledge that people should have that they're likely not to have. What do you do about it? Let's take a look at statement number eight. So in statement number eight, I declare a local exception and associate it with negative 24381. And then very nicely in my exception section, I can handle that specific error by name making it very clear as to what is going on. And in addition, just as a by the way, I don't have to say else re-raise. This allows the, any other exception that was raised to propagate out unhandled, allowing the trace, the back trace, to trace back to that original line number, which you might lose with a re-raise. So that's pretty nice, but that's still not the best way to go. What's the best way to go? Declaring those exceptions at a package specification level so you don't have to do them more than once. In statement eight, if I take that approach, then every time I do a for all statement, I need to include the, declar the declaration of the exception and the pragma statement. Here's a better way to go. Create a package or use a central package in your application to store a number of predefined exceptions. In other words, you're predefining them, not Oracle, but they're defined once in this global package. And then they can be referenced in any local subprogram that needs to execute a for all with save exceptions. So in my final statement 10, Notice that I now do not have a local declared exception. I simply, in my exception section, say when package dot exception name then. So now I can utilize the same exception throughout my entire application. My localized code is shorter. I don't have to put those different pragmas in each one. And my code is very readable. So key message, do not hard code error codes, error numbers in your application software. Instead, soft code them with the pragma exception in it.